Well, I just went outside and took a little walk and uh, really a beautiful day. Uh, we've been having all these clear skies in Colorado. I never seen like all week long, clear skies, not a cloud in the sky, just clear. And uh, been kind of in the 60s and 70s today. Um, so I went out to take a walk and it was beautiful outside and looking at all the fall leaves and i love these leaves <laughs> i don't even know what you call those leaves but my husband say aspen leaves or uh, maybe aspen leaves or oak leaves but i just love these leaves i always like them um and so i'm just out and joined the day and came uh decided to come on here and read a poem i was listening to lois shop poem last night i will post it in the description box she did a short video um and I think the poem was absolutely amazing. And I haven't been uh, really doing my poetry a whole lot lately, but I decided to go ahead and share one today about the Sabbath, since we were talking about the Sabbath yesterday. And today, people keep the Sabbath as Sunday, and Sunday is not the Sabbath. So I will be reading this poem relating to the Sabbath. And But while I'm doing that, um, then I'm going to share something coming from... Uh, a prophetic word that I think fits fits right in with us right now from uh, Light Has Come, a lady named Renee P., whoever she is. She's talking about the places of refuge um, in the Great Tribulation. So I'm going to share that message with you. And then I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to make it a long video, so I'm just going to let you go. But in the front of me, I want to bring this out more because we I know I have it the link down in my description box all the time. You know, my blog, our blog. My husband uh do a lot of uh uh writing uh, on the blogs and messages he posts there. If you can see here the icobs, uh he um always got something in there, inspirational. Uh, so I don't know if a lot of you knew about our blog that much because we don't talk about it that much. But um, this is Jeans and Martin's Devotional Blog. Um, you can go here to my poetry, where I'm going to be reading from in a few minutes. But my book on here is just an ebook. I don't sell anything, don't want to sell anything. Maybe one day, if the Lord tell me to do that, I might. But I just never seen God walking around selling things. So I just really don't impress me very much. But uh, I did a book on the, my testimonies, and I'm going to be adding more testimonies. If, you know, if my husband can get them edited, uh, I'm going to be adding more testimonies. Uh, it's, my book is called He Did What? And it's talking about all the uh, testimonies of my life with Yeshua. And so, uh, and then you can go here to, um, I think I got this. Let me see if I can move this over a little. No, I can't do it now anyway. But um, this. Um, just wanted to introduce you to our blog if you've never seen our blog. Uh, we have uh, also on there is, um, I think another book I have on there is, um, oh, what is the other book? Um, I can't even, I can't scroll my screen down. I didn't put it over enough so I can reach that link. Uh, I don't think I can do it. No, hold on. Oh, Hikaki, yeah, okay, see. All right, I can do it a little here, but... Um, it's just a lot of uh, books, my books here and, and things of that nature. Uh, but um, you can go there and just look freely on our blog at all, all the materials that we have posted and uh, everything. So uh, this, uh, let me see. Oh, okay. Hold on a minute. I got to try to get this done. I didn't size it up right. Okay. So I didn't do it right. Oh, let me see. I can't do it now. It's too late because I got it on. So let me see here. Uh, I don't want inter to interrupt the whole thing. So, but anyway, uh, anyway, people, I just want to make sure you guys know about the blog. And so let me try to go to my poem right now if I can get to that. This is the contents of He Did What. Let me go back up to my contents page. Uh, okay. Let me go back over to the poetry. Uh, so, okay, yeah. So I just want to read this here poem about the Sabbath is a sign. Uh, one of my poems I did back in 2011. You know, every time I was trying to do this poem, the devil would destroy it. I remember the original 
original, original one I did. It was really rhymy and not quite designed like this one. But uh, every time I tried to reproduce it over, uh, you know, recreate it, I could never get it to be the original one. So I had to kind of make this one. And I had made this one in 2011. But my original one was made in 2008, 2008. And I couldn't get it to be the same identical way. Because every time I would try to talk about it, it would get stolen, it get lost, I don't know. But here I'm going to read this one to you now uh, about uh, the Sabbath is a sign. So bear with me. Oh, wow, okay, if I can find here. The Sabbath is a sign. Clouds are dancing across the skies. Terrors cry tears among us. The enemy isn't sleeping. He's creeping inside the brain, trying to confuse man again and again. Nations rising against nations. Kingdoms are against kingdoms. Assassins are bringing fury to his adversaries. Yet the blind are leading the blind, with them not knowing that the Sabbath is a sign. Daniel's dream is alive and the books are open. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. Uh, there will be a remnant that will possess all the things of the Lord. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie. They have told false dreams, they comfort in vain. They disrespect Yahweh, but rather obey man. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. For he spake in a certain place on the seventh day on this wise. And Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all of his works. Are you considering God or throwing your pearls before swine? It's time to recognize above all things that the Sabbath is a sign. For if Yeshua, Jesus, had given them rest, both Jews and Gentiles, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? If you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments, is what the master says. Wake up, have eyes to see and ears to hear. Don't be double blind. Sunday is not the Sabbath because the Sabbath is a sign. God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. God made it holy, set it apart from the other days of the week. Don't be deceived by Satan. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. When you read the gospels in the Bible, it is well defined. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature and served the creature more than the creator? and overlook the fact that the Sabbath is a sign. Uh, Job 5.17 says, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. The Sabbath is a sign for all God's people. Blessed are the ones who Yahweh protecteth. Yes, stop listening to man and the blind leading the blind. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Remember the Sabbath is a sign. Wherefore, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, okay? So I just thought I would share that with you guys. Uh, yes, yeah, so a bunch of poetry in my, I got another book and another poetry book, and I got other stuff there. Uh, and I was trying to find, uh, the, let me see here what it says. I might can't go there now. Uh, I don't know why I can't get to the other book. Where's the other book on here? I don't find my other book at all. Um, let me see if I can find here. The other book is called, uh, A Time to Be Born. I don't see it anywhere on here. And I know it, I know it is, but I don't see it here. Let me see. Um, but anyway, uh, it's on there somewhere, people. I don't know. It's called, um, uh, A Time to Be Born is my other book. Okay. And it's just talking about a bunch of poetry I have put together from back in the 80s to up to now. And I'm going to be trying to expand it, uh, add some more poetry pieces and add some more testimonies uh, to He Did What. So that'll be coming up for you later to look at. Um, if you want to go to my blog here, our blog, and look at it. The Last Chance Newsletter. I don't even know what that is. The Last Chance Newsletter. What's that, honey? I know what that is. So my husband have all these things on here, and I don't know what they are sometimes. But anyway, you can go and look at, oh, it's one of something he wrote, the Last Chance Newsletter. 
But uh, yeah, people, just want to introduce that if you haven't looked at it, because some, some people don't go in the description box. I know some people have cell phones and they probably don't even get in the description box, but I just wanted to let you know this is available. Uh, a lot of writings on here from my husband as well. A lot of writings that he does. Um, and so uh, discipleship, uh, this all kind of things are on here. Uh, my page, I think, I don't even know what my, what my page consists of because I haven't looked at my page in a long time. I think it's just a, a one point poem here. But yeah, you can just go take a look at all these things when you get time. Um, Gene's page. Uh, he has a lot of writings, okay, a lot of different inspirational writings on his page um, and, and his uh, where he come and write every day. So let me go over here to um, this other message I want to share with you guys coming from um, Light Has Come. Prophetic Word, Places of Refuge in the Great Tribulation by Rene P., uh, October 21st, 2018. Places of Refuge in the Great Tribulation, okay. Places of Refuge in the Great Tribulation, Sunday, 20, October 21st at 2018 at 12 p.m. My dear children, it is your Lord speaking clearly to you, for the time has come to get to know me mightily now, more than ever before. It is no time to procrastinate. If you desire to help in the preparation of heaven, lost sheep during the coming tribulation, you must be prepared to repent and indwell with the Holy Spirit. Many are called, few are chosen, and the workers are few. I need my faithful ones to come to me in prayer, and I will help guide them in what preparation are required. So he, it's true. He wants us to come to him. I've been talking about this all month long, that you need to be seeking Yeshua about where you need to go, what you need to do, uh, where he would have you to go. Sometimes he tell you to stay where you are already, uh, and work in your communities. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, uh, he tell you to uh, get books, uh, get books to give out, or tracts to give out, and work in your communities, work in your churches, work in the malls, whatever. So you need to go and ask him what he would have you to do and where he would have you to go. I know some people have moved already. Some people moved from California. Some people moved from uh, different parts of the, of the country, the different places, as they was guided by the Lord to move out of the big cities into the smaller cities, or uh, uh, out of smaller cities into the wilderness areas. You know, whatever he's telling you to do. I don't know. I don't live with you. I don't know what he's telling you. So you have to seek his face and know that it's time to, uh, you know, time to really ask him what he would have you to do. I need to wipe my glasses off here a bit. But, uh, you know, that's what really you need to do is seek the Father, and he will absolutely tell you what to do, okay? And you ha you don't have to go seeking other people, and he can tell you what to do. So she's, it says here, um, these are letters of encouragement and guidance that need to be written. How can you write these letters if you are not of me, and my spirit of Christ doesn't cohabit within me? You cannot simply buy food stores and prepare for doomsday. If you are not a me, how can I guide you with which preparation you need to make? The spiritual preparations are the most important. How do you know what resources you need if you do not hear my voice directly? My daughter here can help, but each refuge is different and will have special requirements. How will you know what special supplies you will need? How will you know who has been sent of the devil to infiltrate your sanctuary if you do not hear my voice? That's that's really important. That's why I know when I go out giving books out even, I don't go out trying to run in the street, run in a corner, and just start you know handing books everywhere. I have to ask the Father to lead me, guide me. And you know, people, it protects you when you get his direction. Because if you start going out, you can get blowed away. You can get shot. You can, you know, you don't know. If you want to, you know, you have to be wise in whatever you're doing at all times. I'm always asking him to lead me to somebody at Walmart. Lead me to somebody when I'm out. And believe it or not, most people will come and start talking to me. And then I know that's a sign. And he'll give me different signs uh, that I, I'm used to by now because I've been doing this for so many years. So, you know, you get conditioned to doing the things Yeshua want you to do. You get, uh, uh, trained he trained us you know and then you will know how to work in the vineyard and what to do and what to say and uh and he'll 
maybe have somebody waiting at the doctor's office when you go there. There's somebody who sit by you and he might want you to pass them a book that you may have in your purse or pass them a track that you have in your uh, possession. Uh, but, you know, this is how Yeshua worked. He set these things up. He worked with us. The angels work with us. Hallelujah. The angels work with us. Okay. So uh, <coughs> it says here, uh, call on me in prayer. Call on me in prayer. Well, in prayer. Yeah, both of them in prayer. Call on me in prayer to ask for this gift. I give freely and willingly to those that ask my daughter here has posted some letters that are examples of the ones I have had her write, and she will continue to update as I provide them to her. Share your resources as time is being compressed, and I need shelters of sanctuary for my lost sheep. Preparations need to be made. If you are willing to help, then come to me and share your desires to do so. I will make finances and resources available to you if you desire to give of your time and minister in this way. It is not easy. I'm so glad he's telling us it's not easy because people think it's such a pizza, pizza king, you know, so, uh, so, uh, so easy to do. My husband was talking about that the other night, that the walk with Yeshua is not easy, not easy. And we always think it should be easy. And he already told us it's not easy and that you're going to have all these, uh, people, uh, attacking you and putting you down and calling you names and uh, just everything you can imagine. People getting their heads cut off in other lands of the world. I mean, you know, because they refuse to bow down to Allah. Uh, they refuse to bow down to Hinduism, whatever it may be, people. We need to know that it's not an easy job. And that's why I tell people, if you're not, if you can't even keep the Sabbath, if you can't even do one thing he asks you to do, how you expect to do other things? What are you going to do when they come to you and say you uh, tempt you to eat? Uh, 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 your children are hungry and starving. What are you going to do? Are you going to give up your crown and, and give in to the enemy, give in to the Antichrist system? If we're not practicing in little things, faithfully practicing in little tiny things where Yeshua can trust us, because you know, it ain't about we trusting him. It's about him trusting us. Okay. It's not about him loving us. It's about you loving him because you know, he loved us. He died for us. He made the great sacrifice. So, you know, people come around and say, well, you know, oh yeah, God did this for me and God did this for me. Yeah. God going to do a lot for his people. He love us, but he's not going to sit there and he won't trust you. If he can't trust you, he can't trust you. So you need to be working with him where he can trust you, get to know you, who you are. That's why we are tested. We're always being tested. And, uh, you know, because I'd say, man, I can see why the Lord, the father does that because man, I can't hardly trust friends today. They come along and say they want to love the Lord and serve the Lord. And then when the Lord get through doing for them and giving them things they need, they go back into the world and start doing all kinds of stuff, uh, walking away from the commandments. And, you know, you, we, we are tested every day from the little things we do. I, I've already figured that one out. Because, you know, like my grandfather used to say, if you lie about one thing, a lie about two things, you'll be lying about everything. And, you know, and who wanna who want to trust a liar? Because Yeshua don't like liars. He don't like liars. He don't like uh, pe pride. He don't like pride. He don't like people who are trying to put this stuff on a pedestal. Uh, he don't like any of that stuff. You know, we ought to be humble before him. He's the only one that made the great sacrifice for us that we may have eternal life. So we should be giving him all of ourselves, all of ourselves, whatever he can do, whatever we can do for the kingdom. We should be doing that right now. So it says here, I, I love that what he's saying. It's not easy. And I just lost that. Uh, it is not easy at all. Okay. It is not easy. It is not easy. And you must sacrifice your all to me. You know, that's just what I just said. I didn't even read it. I just said it. Just came to me in the spirit. We must sacrifice our all to Yeshua. I will not use those that are half hearted. Do you understand that? Half hearted. A foot in the world, a foot in the world, and a foot in Yeshua. A foot in the world, a foot in Yeshua. I got to, uh, you know, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to go to this club. I got to hang out with my boys. I got to hang out with my friends. I need my friends, Marner. Uh, you know, uh, I don't have time for ministry. I got to do this. I got to do that. Well, you know, Yeshua don't want half-hearted people. He said, if you can't forsake mother, sister, brothers, uh, uh, all this stuff, people, things, idol tree, uh, 
people make an idols. I think they make more idols of these dogs today. I love animals with all I like them. Yahweh created them, but sometimes we can make our pets like idols. Idols, okay. You know, they 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 mean it, they they like everything in your life. You can't do without them. You you know, you just this you know you get the drift. You get the drift, okay. We need to really understand how important it is to give time to Yeshua and, and let him be the number one thing in our life and, and seeking him for all answers. Okay. So he says here, um, I'm going to go back to where I was here. I keep losing my way. Um, it is not easy. You must sacrifice your all to me. I will not use those that are half hearted. I have always provided places and cities of refuge for my people. I will do so again in the great tribulation. I need my bride to be the guides of such locations as they would stand as the watchtower over my lost people. If I place a calling upon your heart for such a commission, use the spirit of discreet, discreetment to follow my way forward. And so, you know, this is what we are working on. We are praying about this daily. I know I'm not far away from the mountains, 30 minute drive up the mountain there. But I'm just saying we need to be asking Yeshua way to go and, and, and trying to have a refuge in your area or whatever, getting with other people who have like minds like yourself uh, and, you know, preparing, preparing, preparing because tribulation is on the way. War is already being just, oh my goodness, war is already started pretty much and it's going to escalate, get worse and worse. We're going to have civil war probably in America. The economy is going to be a threat, which is a threat already. So that's why I say don't put your trust in uh, governments and trust in uh, all these things around us that we put our trust in. We need to put our trust in Almighty. We need to be prepared and keep in water, food, shelter, clothing. A lot of people, the, the storm are missing still. We know in, up in the Michael storm, a lot of people are missing. A lot of people are in not having electricity. A lot of people don't have air conditioning. They are in the hot heat. Uh, a lot of them don't have food and shelter and clothing. I mean, it's on the news and little experts. They're not talking about it much. You know, you notice after the storm is over, they don't talk about it a whole lot. Okay. But if you go and do a Google search, you'll find those private messages that goes on that tell you what's going on in Panama City and what's going on in Tallahassee and all these things. <clears throat> so we need to know that these disasters are going to take place from one city to another, from one state to another. It ain't going to happen all at once overnight, but it's going to happen here, a little here, there, here. It's going to happen. But wait till it come to our area, then we'll know what I'm talking about. So we need to be preparing, just prepare. So I love this message here. I uh, hope it gave you some en encouragement there, people. Uh, the places of refuge in the Great Tribulation. I thank you for that article, Miss Sophie. Uh, so, um, I'm just going to go now. I'm not going to even talk anymore. Uh, I'm going to go in here and get some things done. I got to do before six o'clock. But uh, if you guys uh, really uh, want to have a testimony to share with me, just send testimonies in and I will share them on my channel. I just got another message I'm going to close with from William today from uh, Uganda again. And I have it here on my pad. And I'm going to just read what he told me on a text this morning. He said, my, uh, he said, I had another vision last night. He said, Jesus took my hand and told me, I want to take you to heaven and showed me a big, showed me his glorious throne. I'm sorry. Showed me his glorious throne and he showed me his glorious throne. Uh, and then he took me to a big pit that separated heaven and hell. And he said, I crossed on small bridge I, I crossed on a small bridge with him and i saw when a gate was opening inside and the kingdom was so glorious so that's all he gave me the kingdom was so glorious and so you know we do not want to miss out on that opportunity i just invite you today to give your life to yeshua hamashiach go to romans 10 9 and 10 and read it and give your life to him people we must believe in yeshua okay we must believe in my father we must believe that he exists I'm sorry about the video yesterday, people, about the video who wasn't shown. But if that ever happens, just go in the, in the description box and get the original link. I will always post that stuff so you know that. Uh, so you can go in the original, um, the original um, box and uh, in the description box and get the original link and play it again, okay, if you see that happen. Because I don't know, electronics are funny. You know, they always 
working and sometimes they're not working right. So I'm sorry about that video on our last video. But, uh, you know, I care so much about you guys. So um, just wanted you to know that. I'm going to run here to Romans real quick and close out. Um, we're going to be praying a lot this week. I want you guys to join with me in prayer for Halloween. We're really praying over New York City and all these areas where they're putting curses out on the people, on the uh, on the president, on all the areas around America. These witches are working. So we need to be praying uh, and, uh, like I said, uh, break the chains of all this evil going around. So make sure you be praying with me all this week uh, about these situations. But let's go over here real quickly to Romans. Romans 5, uh, Romans 10 and 10. I just want people to see it, see it right here on the screen. Romans 10, Romans 10, 9 through 10. Okay, and see what it says here. Because it's very important that we understand. It's very important that we understand. I got it big enough where you can read it yourself. But I, if you really are struggling with sin today, and you know that uh, Yeshua is the only answer he is the only answer, people. He's the only answer, okay? So let's read from uh, verse 8, and I'm going to close. It says here, but what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart one believes in the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Hallelujah. And uh, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. So how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, here I am preaching it to you guys all the time to give your life to Yeshua HaMashiach. Nobody else is going to save you. Hinduism, Buddhism, Catholicism, atheism, witchcraft, astrology, uh, Allah. None of these people are going to save you. So it's time to give your life to Yeshua I'll walk away from these things, walk away from Catholicism, especially uh, a lot of people be, need to come out of these churches, these holots, mother of holot churches uh, who refuse to keep Sabbath and want to keep Sunday, need to come out, need to come out. And how shall they preach unless they are sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of priests, who bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And it's really true. Nobody want to believe. Nobody want to believe. So I hope you receive him today as your king and savior. And Father, be with the people watching today. Thank you for this video. Thank you for this time today together in nature. Uh, we ask that your Holy Spirit will touch everyone listening. Be with every name in the prayer box, every man, woman, boy, girl, all the evangelists and pastors and preachers, uh, evangelists and missionaries all over the world right now, Father. A lot of people struggling today. We need offerings to come in today to help this one brother right now. Uh, we just need offerings to come in, Father. Touch the people hearts to give. We thank you for all the givers. We thank you for all the people who uh, believe in giving. Because, you know, giving, you said the more you give, the more you receive, Father. And so we just thank you for givers. And we bless your holy name. Uh, we bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind our evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. And we ask that you supply the people needs, Father, as we just spoken about needs. Uh, supply the people needs according to your riches and glory and Yeshua HaMashiach. And we bless your holy name. We thank you so much. We ask it all in the mighty name of Yeshua. Well, you have a blessed Sunday, people. And I'll be back with another video. Um, I love you guys so much. So we just ask that you uh, go and look in the description box for some more additional news or uh, uh, some other things I may put down there. Benjamin Faircloth just uh, came out with his sermon for the day. If you want to listen to that, uh, I post it in the description box called, um, I think I'm just looking at it now. I don't even have it here written down. But I will post it in the description box. And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, I love you so much. Bye-bye. And I'll see you again soon. Shalom, shalom. Love you so much. Bye-bye.